So I really think that DIY sofas are the toughest thing to build. And the reason is the cushions. Unless you know how to sew, upholstery is tough and getting custom upholstery done, which I've done for this sofa, is really expensive. And that's why for this video, I have bought this futon sofa off of eBay for just about 200 bucks, which is less than the upholstery I did for the sofa I mentioned before. So this is the perfect opportunity to build a custom frame for a DIY sleeper sofa that's 1-800-SUPER-PRO on Modern Builds. Today's video is brought to you by Squarespace. Now I already know that some of y'all are thinking that even though $200 is affordable for a sofa, it ain't nothing, which I agree. But if you think about this sofa without the arms on either side, then all of a sudden it may look a little more familiar like the futon sleeper sofas you've seen all your life. Growing up, I remember seeing these simple sofas all the time in kids' rooms, rec rooms, or anywhere that furniture needed to be cheap. And I have to imagine that futons or sofas like this go really cheap at garage sales. So to sum this all up, I am really excited to have a sofa that's ready-made with great cushions, but this also just happens to have the futon mechanisms, which is like the cherry on top. Now let's get building. I've been using a whole lot of Radiata pine plywood lately. It's the most affordable cabinet grade option at most big box stores, and I really like it. It's been my material of choice on this school bus to tiny house series. What you've seen me do so far is break down this sheet into 10 and a half inch wide strips that I'll be using to make four identical leg blanks, all cut to the same length of 68 and 3 eighths inch, the same size as the futon sofa base. And I should mention the legs I made are 10 and a half inches tall to fit over the wheel wells in the school bus tiny house that this project is going in. Otherwise, I would have made them eight inches tall. The back leg for this sofa isn't gonna be moving at all. That's why I just glued it together to make it as strong and sturdy as possible. The front leg, on the other hand, is made up of two pieces that are gonna be able to slide with the base, and it's gonna look really cool because they're gonna nest back together. I tend to have a lot of leftover eight foot long, but not very wide pieces of plywood. So I utilize these to make a bunch of three and a half inch wide and two inch wide strips that I'm gonna use to create the platform for this sofa. That is one nice part about using the same material consistently is that all of your scraps match. And just for context, I'm making the platform out of two layers of plywood that can slide in and out to allow the futon to fold down. But don't worry, if you're still a little confused, it'll all make sense soon enough. I rated the scrap wood pile and I found more pieces to make three and a half inch wide slats out of. The platform that I'm making has a total of eight slats. The base for this project is really simple, and as you see it all come together, I think you're going to understand how it works pretty easily. Right now, we're assembling the back portion, and this will be the stationary part of the base that's attached to the rest of the sofa frame. I kept my 12-inch speed square with me so that I made sure all of my slats were running perpendicular with this back rail of the base, and once I had those on, I could install the front rail. Once that piece was in place, I could use 8th inch spacers between my slats and attach the second set of boards onto the front rail. If I was building this project again, I would have used half inch spacers in between these slats. That way everything would be able to slide just a little bit easier. Smooth. Typically, I see people making bases like this using 2x4s, often for sprinter vans or tiny house builds, but I was happy to see that using 3 quarter inch plywood worked just as well and everything was able to slide easily. So with that done, I could flip my base around and start installing the back leg, which is the set of legs that we glued together earlier. After making sure to apply glue to the correct boards, I could put that leg in place and screw it with some 2 and a half inch screws. As of late, you've been seeing me use these trim head screws all the time. I love how small the head is on them and how easy it is to fill them with wood filler. And for these boards, I'm using inch and a quarter wood screws since I have about an inch and a half thick material. 
Even though my front leg is in two pieces, it's gonna install similarly to the back leg. I glued and screwed the front part of the leg just like I did on the rear assembly, and then I could put the second piece of the leg in place, holding it there with spring clamps. I added another piece of plywood as a positive stop for this back portion of the leg, and I screwed it in place just like the front. And now once I remove the spring clamps, you can see how the front of the leg assembly is able to slide out and this is what the sofa futon will attach to and then the back portion of that front leg will attach permanently to the rigid part of the frame. Oh, nice. So hopefully I did a decent enough job explaining this, but now you can see how we made a stationary base with this expanding leaf and the best part about it is that the front legs nest together so no one will know until you use it. Really quickly, before moving on, I'd like to give a big thanks to Squarespace, the sponsor of today's episode. If you need a website, why not build it yourself? And why not use Squarespace? Squarespace's library of designer templates look incredible, right out of the box. I'm sure you'll find one to match your needs and your style. And from there, if you can drag and drop files on your computer and edit text blocks, you are well on your way to completing your custom website. Plus, Squarespace websites are optimized to look great on desktop, tablet, and mobile. That way you look good no matter where you're visitors find you. And right now, if you follow my link down in the description, that's squarespace.com slash modern builds, you can build out an entire Squarespace website without entering any of your credit card info. That's right. Squarespace is so confident in their service that they know you'll love it. And then when it's time to make your new website live, don't forget to use the code modern builds at checkout for 10% off your first website, online store, or domain. Huge thanks to Squarespace. Now back to the build. Now that the plywood base is complete, we can move on to creating new sides for the original futon. And I would consider using these original arms. I like the way they look, but I just wish they extended all the way to the wall. I really don't like seeing this big negative space behind the back cushion and the wall. And since I'm changing up the shapes of these arms, I figured I would change up the materials too and use the same three quarter radiata pine plywood I've been using for this project. Whenever I'm doing stacked plywood projects, I usually overcut all of my plywood blanks, glue them together, and then trim them to their final dimensions. But for this project, I tried cutting all of my blanks to their final dimensions from the jump. And overall, it worked out great. My pieces were pretty consistent because I always measured twice before cutting. But I did have some extra sanding to do later on to make sure my edges were clean. So my plywood has an obvious A side and a B side, as you can see from these imperfections. We wanna make sure that these are either hidden or cut out for the final piece. And since both of these plugs are on one side of the board, I'm gonna just make this the bottom of the side panel and I'll cut my arms here on the top. I used a protractor and I found that the back of the futon naturally rests at about 30 degrees. So I laid out lines and I cut a two inch strip off of the top of these side panels where I want the arms to be. I used a straight edge on this first cut and then freehanded the angle. Oh, shoot. Oh. Whoops. Even on shortcuts like this, I prefer to establish my line using the circular saw because I get less blade deflection, even though I still need to come back with the jigsaw and just trim that little bit of material left in the corners. As many of y'all know, wood glue is crazy strong. In fact, that's what's giving this sofa the majority of its structural integrity. And here, I attached a simple ledge onto the inside of the arm. That way I had a positive stop for the base to latch onto. This just helps line everything up. It also gives me some material to bite onto with these screws. I made sure to screw from both sides. That way I got really good clamping pressure and that's what's gonna allow this glue to have a really strong hold. I mentioned earlier that I had a little extra sanding to do because I didn't trim my plywood edges with the circular saw first. So I started with 80 grit sandpaper to do all of my rough sanding, then finished with 150 grit before applying a couple coats of water-based polyurethane. So the moment of truth had finally come and it was time to attach the futon to the base that I had made. For starters, it was just nice to see that everything fit, but once I knew that, I could use screws to attach the sliding portion of the base onto those cushions. And with that, our DIY sleeper sofa is complete.
I am pumped with this project. I think it looks way better than an average DIY sofa and has more functionality in it. I think there's so many places we could go with an idea like this, and I think this is an awesome prototype. So thanks a ton for watching, and I really hope you enjoyed this project. The sofa came out awesome, especially considering that the original futon we used only cost about 200 bucks. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, if I built this project again, I would have given myself a little bit more wiggle room. That way everything could just slide a little bit easier. I also just could have used thicker spacers between my runners. That way I had a little bit less friction between them now. If you're not already, make sure and click the subscribe button down below. That way you can stay updated every time I post new project videos. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram. You can find me at Modern Builds. I really appreciate all the support guys. And until next time, this has been Modern Builds. Bye. Fingers crossed. Oh, we have juice. Yeah!